Good morning, YouTube friends. Have we told you lately how much we appreciate you guys? Because we do. So, this is what we're doing today. Um, this is the combiner box we got. It's cool because it's already it's fused. It has breakers. I mean, it's it was like 129 bucks. I'll put the link in the description. But it just seemed like such an elegant way of getting this stuff inside. It's all waterproof and everything. And if you look at the ends right here, like the solar panels just plug right into it. It's everything's sealed and and perfect. So I really like the design. Went ahead and got this one and uh, it's rated for the uh, power requirements that we're about to use here so however the unfortunate nature of this is that the wire i got were i'm going to say six inches too short just six inches too short and so i actually have to drill a hole in the deck to uh, pass the wires through so that they'll make it to the connections inside this box so that's kind of sad but not the worst thing that's ever happened to us so let's get started okay guys this is a forstner bit and it's different than a hole saw hole saws uh, are like they say it has a bit that cuts in a circle um, this actually digs a hole I'll show you see this so it's just removing all the material. The reason I use this is it just makes a super clean uh, hole in it because it has these really, really sharp blades right at the edge of the, the bit. And when it comes out the other side, it will just clean, nice clean hole or as clean as it would get, can get versus using something else like a hole saw. There we go. Ooh, it's like perfect underneath there. So, in lieu of painting this right now, I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna pass the wires through and to finish this off, I'm gonna caulk this entire hole up so that it's uh, sealed good as well as uh, protecting the inside of this wood right here. I don't care if water falls through here, what I care about is that the plywood on the inside of this isn't exposed to direct moisture. Ta-da, now I have plenty of wire. There we go. So when you're working with DC electricity, the biggest wire you can use is the better. These are eight feet pieces of wire, eight and a half feet actually. And so I'm just using four gauge wire to minimize any loss that I might have. In full sunlight, we're producing 1500 watts of power here. So I wanna get it there as efficient as I can so I don't lose it. So let's do that. The power comes in through these two glands right here and into this right here and this this is a circuit breaker right here and positives this side negatives this side it's marked so I got to get these through the gland and because it's so heavy wire it's just gonna suck to get it done but we also have to strip this back to get them into these things I think they'll fit stripping big wires hard we have to have this on first or I have to take it all apart and do it again one and push that down good all right this one's gonna be a bit harder than the last one because we've got to turn a corner okay we got the meter out here so let's see what we got here All right, 64 volts, 63, 62 volts coming into it. That is awesome, and it's a cloudy day, so, and I can't measure current this way, so, but that's what we got coming in, and now we can, uh, we can hold, hook this thing down and seal it up. There it is. 
it's installed. This is the ground wire that I created and it's got this ring connector and I got a self tapper here and I'm just going to hook it right up to the uh, the deck frame itself. And there it is. Grounded. The reason we're doing this is we don't want wires floating around up here and rubbing on metal repeatedly like driving down the road. So we keep them nice and still and held down so they're not pushing up against something sharp and destroying all the work we've put into this. This is our battery uh, rack for all of our solar batteries now so that we can kind of go vertical with them safely and something holds them in position so they don't flop around in the back of the Yeah, I'll probably put a strap behind these. I think that's a good idea. Okay. I was thinking how you could make a gate across the front too, so they don't come out of the front. Uh -huh. If you could put that L-shaped tab right here on each side with a hole through the tab, oh, and for then square on. tube or strap or whatever with a hole in it also, and then bolt at each end. Or I don't yeah, know, maybe we'll you could make a more simplified we'll plan than that, but something to keep them in when we're on bumpy roads. Now listen. to slip a battery into each one of these to make sure that they are uh, okay to take it. Perfect. That. Excellent. There's our battery rack. Yeah. Now what do we do? Bolt it down to the floor of the bus? I think so. Where it belongs? Yeah. More holes in the bus floor. Your favorite thing. Yeah. Look at that thing. This rig can take it. This rig can take it. <laughs> oh, oh, look mama. at who's meowing to come in. Oh, Baba. Do you like the bus now, Mama? Come here, Mama. Come on. I had a piece of strap on here to reinforce it like this way. Okay, let's go. Back into the metal shop. And then that holds the gate on? Yeah, we'll put a piece of metal over here and we can do it later. 
put a piece of metal across and two bolts in here. I knew you would improve on my idea. I'm gonna let that dry for a while before we install. We do have to bolt it to the floor, and I don't have any bolts for that. So we might have to run to town. We need five inch bolts for this. Four or five inch bolts, and they need to be grade what? Eight! That's right. Great babe. You never finished what you were saying in that video when you said, and why did I use grade eight bolts? Grade 8 bolts are really extra hard and strong. Yeah, they're just meant to, for greater uh, greater loads and greater strength. You want to go tell with me? Oh, we're going right now? Go get it. we got to mount it soon. What the hell? Maybe? No, because I got that big wire coming on the wall right there. Man, I made it exactly 31 inches, and it's exactly 31 inches. How could that be a, like a. Welding at least makes shit grow. It grows when you weld it. It sure does. Well, I have an idea for this. It'll be loud and annoying. What? As I have to shave some of that wall back with the router. The fit. whole, like a whole patch of yeah. wall? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Sometimes it's with the welding, sometimes it's with the wood. You just never know what you're going to get. You just have to be prepared for the unexpected at every turn. That's what building a schoolie is really like. Okay, plug this one in for me. Oh my gosh, you're getting serious. Perfect. I think it's gonna go in there now, actually. I surely hope so. Uh, let me come in there and see if I'll slide in. Fortunately, that's not a load bearing wall or anything. It's just screwed to our thing there. See, so yeah, it's just a this. divider wall. Yeah. Putting in the battery rack. <clears throat> Take two. Maybe. on you. That hinge oh. fixing me. It's not gonna go. I'm not gonna go until I take the hinge off anyway. Guess we should count ourselves lucky. That's yeah, true. You only had to take off, you know, what, a fifth of a wall and one hinge. That's oh, all. That's not a big deal. <laughs> Okay. Take oh. whatever number this is. There you can do it. How far does it go? Oh, the battery's in the way. the wires. Sure did. Very nice. I'm going to unplug our bus. Seems like a good idea, except I can't control the drill. Aww. All right, that's one. 
One down, three to go. Show me that big drill bit. Ta-da! That thing is not messing around. What? My gosh, it takes no time to go. Well, there's, a, there's already a hole there. Oh, so it's just making yeah. it wider. Okay, it's just gotcha. like shaving off a little bit, so. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't believe you had to drive all the way to town and back. I that know. took way longer than just getting the job done with the right tool. I know. Now, I need to... This was so clever to put the furniture movers facing up. I thought you were going to put these on the bottom of the batteries and slide them in. And I was like, won't that still scratch the paint? Like, now I see your the brilliance of your master plan. Oh, good. Hey, baby, we've got the other bolts in there real quick for me. Okay, what do you need? You're going to be handing me a washer and nut and a lock washer. Will you push down on this bolt right here? Uh, hand me a washer and a nut and a lock washer. Okay, hand me another set. There's a washer missing. Mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> The moment of truth. This is the moment of truth. Time to put the batteries in the thing. Actually, built. let's put the hinge back on. I don't want to break the door. Oh, that's a good idea. First things first. My honey. No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I should have done that a little faster. <laughs> uh oh, one of the things off. That's okay. These are beasts. Alright, two more outside. I gotta bring in the bus. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that was better. There we go. Excellent. Oh. Uh -huh. Put this one in backwards. Oh darn it. <laughs> Hopefully this will make it up to the next one. Ooh. I don't think it will though. I might have to make another cable a for that. Or one. Yeah. Or this could just be my negative right here. That's probably better. And then the positive here will go. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Now the red ones. You're right, this is definitely much easier to do before you put in the two top batteries. Yeah. You guys want to see a couple of the secrets we have up our sleeves? There's stuff all over the place ready to be installed.
There's two more batteries that we haven't opened yet. And guess what's behind door number two? Ooh, something big, something heavy. It's a wood burning stove. That's just a few of the coming attractions on Bussy McBusface. <laughs> 